Hi, welcome back to this next class, which is a class focusing on knees. So if you have knee pain, or you are just wanting to protect your knees more, or you feel some strain, thigh pain, then we will deal with that in this class. So have around you some props, um, everything but the kitchen sink here today. So a couple bolsters, some blankets, have a, a rolled mat, and some blocks, and a chair. OK? We'll get started. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a like. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell so that you are notified when the new videos are uploaded. Now let's get started. Okay, so I'm sitting on a bolster, so I'd like you to take some height. If you have any knee pain, um, thigh pain, then this class will be just focusing more on how to relieve that pain, how you can be in bent knee positions, how you can still practice yoga, how you can um, be in standing positions with some support so that you're still getting that circulation that you need to bring that uh, energy and blood flow into those joints. But uh, oftentimes when you feel injured, then you don't do anything. And then when you go to do something, you're stiffer. So it's a kind of a knock-on effect. So here, we'll be focusing on the knees and uh, a little bit knees and hyperextension, bow-legged, which all relates to the knees. So from the foot to the ankle to the calf and the shin to the knee to the thigh to the hip, they all have a direct relationship with the pelvis. Okay, so <clears throat> when you're sitting with your legs stretched out, you could start to focus on the feet, right? spreading the toes. You can see a lot about your legs. You can look at your legs and just notice if, they're, if the bone is moving out or if you're not kneed, or what's happening in your legs. So just first of all, be aware of what's happening in your legs. We'll stand up in Tadasana and take your bolster away. So in standing position, you have no problem standing, I'm sure. Um, the more you can stand and let that circulation happen, you can bring your feet together. And I'm going to ask um, Alvina to assist me today. So we're going to bring the feet together. We're going to look at the ankles. We're looking at the knees and looking at the thighs. OK? So Alvina, thank you. All right, so just. This is Alvina. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Yes. Yeah. OK, so you can see her legs here. She's got the outer calf moves out. And chances are she's standing more on the outer side of the foot. So you can just observe where you stand in Tadasana. So coming into Tadasana, inner sides of the feet. Um, so I, I would ask her to start to press down into the inner heel and the inner ball of the foot more. OK, separate your legs so I can put the block here. OK. So because she stands more on the outer foot, you, she's got this happening here. So she needs to press more onto the inner heel and the inner ball of the foot. Mm -hmm. OK. And when she does that, she can see a shift of weight. Do you notice any difference when you do that? Yeah. So you're bringing your ankle bone to that block versus how you might normally stand would be bringing that outer ankle away. So the block just brings more intelligence into the legs, so you can feel more weight, more of what's happening in the feet. OK, now with that, I'm going to bring the strap onto your calves, OK? And with the strap on the calf, that will give her a little bit more information about what needs to be happening in the outer leg which then relates to the knee. So you want to have the legs in alignment as much as possible. And when you have this kind of disparity there, there are things that you can do to train your awareness so, so that you have more awareness on that outer side. OK, now I'm going to just pull that in, bring it right to the center of her calf. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Can you feel that? Yeah. So it makes a difference, and it makes a difference in her legs. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> this is not something she's going to walk around with, but here she gets an impression of what it is to... Um, we have a long muscle that goes alongside of this calf, so how can she... When she's just standing, how can she be aware of this? So with this strap, she has that kind of imprint of what's happening and what needs to happen to bring her more into balance. So without the strap, I'm going to take the strap, loosen the strap. <laughs> Maybe I won't be able to. Let's take the block away. Okay. Now I'll loosen the strap. And with the strap loose, can you feel what the strap was doing? Yeah. Yeah. So just bringing that awareness, that, that um, imprint of where the strap was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when the, let's just look at your knees regularly. So you can see this knee is pointing this direction, and this knee is pointing this direction. Okay. So they're kind of going in the way of the bone. So let's look and see if we bring this between the knees, right? So in order for the knees to go into a straight direction, this knee has to, this has to roll back and this knee has to roll back. So bend your knees a little bit, bend a little bit, a little bit more, yeah? And roll that thigh in, yeah. Okay, do you have the block enough or is it gonna fall? Okay, so now she's got her knees in a straight position. You can feel that. Mm -hmm. Does that feel different yeah. to how you normally feel? I'm sure. <laughs> okay. All right, this is the way you can practice at home just to bring some awareness into your areas that are not working so well. So here I've got it around her calf again, a little bit higher near, near the knees. But you see the knees now are facing in a straight position. So what do you feel on your feet? Where do you feel the weight on your feet? It's more active. Yeah, on the inner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so it's not that her legs are broken. It's just that her, the muscles are not being used mm -hmm. in a balanced and even way, okay? So we all get into bad habits, and when this happens, then we need to just be aware what's happening because over time, if you don't make these little corrections, you may end up with some knee pain <coughs> later on down the road and not understand why you have that knee pain. Okay, now you're gonna separate your legs and you're gonna bring the block between the thighs. Okay, good, and have the block so that it's parallel to the floor. Good, and now, I want you to hug the block, so using the, mm. the block to feel the outer thighs moving in toward that block, mm -hmm. yeah? And then lift the block up, lift the block up. Mm -hmm. So what happens a lot with our knees is that we press the knee back and we push it into the socket. So actually, I'm gonna have you turn around to the side. Okay, good. So she also hyperextends her you can see the calf moving back. So not only does the calf move out this way, it moves back. So often what we do is we just press the knee into the socket. What we wanna do with the knee is we wanna lift the knee up, all right? So I'm gonna resist here, move her forward a bit. And as I did that, you can see that calf is not moving back and the knee is not hyperextending here. So she presses forward a little bit. You can feel the weight on your front foot more than your heel. Here, the weight is on your heel. Here, you're moving more toward the center. Now, move the thighs back at the same time. Move the thigh back without moving the calf back. Move your thigh back, move your thigh back. That's it. Roll the block back. That's it. Okay, so good. Looking much better. So when you know the right direction and you know the the feeling, then you can get more um, sensitivity and understanding. So lifting the kneecap, tightening it up instead of, instead of pressing it back. 
And then once you do that, move the thigh back and the shin bone forward, you could feel you stood up taller, right? Mm -hmm. You could feel that through your chest. Yeah. Okay, good. So turn around forward so we can see you. See the calves. Now, roll the knee back, roll the knee back. That's it. So it's a process and it takes a little bit of time. So over time, if you practice, your, your body will become more sensitive mm -hmm. to what has to happen. Okay, so we already saw the calf and how that was uh, moving out for Alvina. So now we're going to work with the feet and the ankles and you'll also feel the calf. So I've got two blocks here and I have the chair. So I'll show you two different ways, um, with the block and with the chair, and then with the feet closer to the wall and using the ropes if you have it. So I didn't move closer to the wall because when you take your feet up, you're taking your, the ball of the foot up and your hips tend to push back. So I want to bring the tailbone forward and as I do that, I keep pressing the heel down and I've got to balance myself here on the chair so that I can move forward with the hips. Otherwise, just to compensate, I bring my hips back. So as I bring my hips back, balancing with the chair, the kneecap is lifting and the calf is moving forward and lengthening down. So just feel that sensation you feel, breathe into it. So if you look at the back of the knee here, where we've been creating that space, you're lengthening from the top of the knee down and from the, from the top of the, from the bottom of the knee down and from the top of the knee up. Okay, so those two actions are happening. All right, and then I'll show you at the wall. You can take the blocks to the wall and then you can bring the, if you have ropes, you can bring the ball of the foot up onto the blocks and then holding, move the hips forward. And again, you're lifting the kneecaps, you're not pressing the knees back, but you're from a kind of a bent knee position, especially if you're hyperextending, lift the kneecap up, resist the calf, move the calf toward the wall and move the buttock forward. So the thighs moving back, calves moving forward, kneecaps lifting up, and lengthening the calf down toward the heel. Right. Another way that you can practice, if you have a chair, is to turn your chair upside down, have the chair rail at the wall. Depending on your chair, some chairs have bars, some don't, but I've got to bring my feet in. Here, if you hyperextend your calves moving back, this will prevent that from happening. So, and to do this way, you have to have the ropes, okay? So I'm coming forward. So it's giving me a really good stretch in the back of the ankle. Thighs are moving back, kneecaps lifting. And then, of course, the shin bone there is being held, so it's not moving back so far. I can move my <coughs> hips forward, inner thighs back, and lift my chest. So you just observe the sensations you feel. Remember how we had the block between the knees. Roll that inner knee back. Keep that compactness as if you're still hugging that block. Be on the inner and outer heel, inner and outer ankle are parallel to one another. All right, so depending on what kind of knee pain you have, use those directions to direct you, but don't be hard and fast with those because if you're having pain and it's creating more pain, then ease off. Okay? All right. All right, so Alvin is going to show, because you've already seen she has hyperextended knees, so she's going to sit on the bolster, and we're going to go into Upavista Kanasana. 
So sit on this bolster and spread your legs. Take your legs wide. Yeah, be on your heels. Okay, good. So I'm going to take these rolls, rolled blankets. and bring that behind her knee. Because her tendency is to then press down too much here, right? So now she's not able to, and she can straighten the legs. So for those of you that do hyperextend, and you want to practice your Upavista Kanasana, you can take these rolled blankets or anything that you have, but have it be a little bit firm. You could take um, a rolled mat as well, so that it's, it's there so that there's a bit of resistance there. So you're looking at the knees and you're drawing the kneecap up instead of pressing it down. Yeah, now take your hands behind you, fingertips, and lift the chest. So in this position, you keep your heels so that you're right on the center, your toes are pointing up. And from that action of pressing into the ball of the foot, you tighten and lift up through the kneecap. Yeah, so the thighs are descending in Upavista Kanasana. So there's that tendency when the thighs are descending to move the knee, jam it into the back of the knee socket. And then later on you have pain and you don't really know why, mm -hmm. okay? So this is one way that you can practice with the blanket behind, okay? So I'll show you one more way while she's here. Um, this is not for hyperextending knees, but Ooh, excuse me. If you had stiff knees and it's hard to straighten your legs, then you could have more height underneath, underneath the heel, which would then cause the knee to move into the socket more. Can you feel that, mm -hmm. that it moves in? Yes. So for you, you know, we have to keep doing what, what you just did. So. <clears throat> keep from bringing that knee back into the socket, okay? So here, lengthen, straighten the leg completely, but by drawing the leg up, okay? So if you look at your knees, you've got the outer knee edge and the, the inner knee and the outer knee. The outer knee is always shorter. So trying to make more space there and then as you look at your knees, you can see, are your knees moving to the side? So your tendency is to move to the side. So be on the center of the heel so that you see both knees are facing up toward the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then like with the block, roll that inner thigh down. So the inner knee is moving down. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Putting all that together with the block here, with the block here, and what we did with the ankles. So keep the feet. So both ankle bones are parallel to one another. Uh -huh. Okay? Yep. All right, so this is for people mainly that um, <clears throat> you're not able to straighten your leg completely, you have a little bit of pain in your knee, or you just don't straighten your leg. So here, you can lift the heels up and that will drive that kneecap into the socket more, which you won't have a tendency to hyperextend if you're um, not able to straighten the knee, so you just work on lifting up, drawing the kneecap up. Okay? All right, Alvina. Good. All right. <laughs> so take your feet off. Good. All right. That's good. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so we're going to practice Baddha Kanasana now. So you may be tight in your hips, and if you are, then you can see I've taken two bolsters here. So you sit on more height. If when you sit, your knees are coming up, like, say like this, yeah, you need to release that pressure. And this would be hard on your knees if you're having knee pain. So you can take more height. I have a couple bolsters here, and then I have a rolled mat here because my feet are going to be much higher now. They're not going to be able to be on the ground. So I have just a little bit of support there. 
and then sit evenly. So here, now there's not so much pressure on the legs. Also, in the last one that we just did, Upa Vista, you can see where with that extra height, you'll be able to straighten the legs and just allow some circulation to come through the knees uh, while you sit a bit higher. Okay, so now what I want to show you is when you have knee pain, there's a way that you can use some straps or some belts. So now I've got two ropes. These are rope balls, so if you have ropes at your house, you can use those. If not, I'll show how to do this with straps as well. So usually what we need to do is make more space at the back of the knee. So I'll just show here. From the calf, you take your thumb and you move that calf down. Okay, so you're essentially making more space in the back of the knee. That's why we wear shorts, because you don't want any extra material here um, in the back of the knee. So when I sit now, I'm going to make that space like I did. I'm going to take the, the rope in the back of the knee, just, just like so, just to get it there first. Okay, and then bring my feet up. So from here, making that space, you can even take the rope and pull the calf down so that there's some space there. And I'll just, no need to cinch that. So you just want to be able to pull it. So here, you're going to pull from the inner knee to the outer knee. And with that, just gentle pull, it's not very much at all. You're able to create a little bit of space in that front of that knee socket, in the front of the knee joint. Okay, so it feels really good if you have a pull from the, from the inner knee. It gives you a little bit of space. So you just stay there, breathe into it. And then, Notice how that feels. You can also take the strap and from the inner, so you want to hold close, not way over here, but hold close to the inner knee. And from the inner knee, you will then pull up a little bit and pull this back of the thigh away from the knee. Okay, so you're getting more space here as well, but in a different way. By pulling the, the rope toward the thigh, here I was pulling the rope toward the knee, okay? Sometimes we do this in a class, um, a therapy class, um, but you can do this on your own. You can have two, two ropes or two straps. So I'll just show you with the strap. It would be same principle. We use the rope many times just because of the roundness of the rope. It gives a little bit better connection, um, but the strap works fine as well. So you take the strap in the back of the knee, close the knee off, and then take the other one. So right in the back, calf is releasing this way, top of the thigh is releasing the other way, and then bend the knee. And then here, holding that close to the inner knee, then I would pull directly out toward the inner knee. And sit up tall while you do that. Keep your arms straight and keep your back lifted up. You can sit closer to the wall if you want to stay a little bit longer. And then here is from the inner knee to the, the thigh. I've got my elbows bent because I need to have that bent elbow position to keep my chest lifted. So it brings nice relief to any kind of pain. It brings space, and it, whether you have knee pain or not, it's sometimes a good practice to do just to stay aware of that opening through the knee. Okay, so that's Baddha Konasana. Take those straps away. Okay, so next we'll do a couple standing poses so you can see when Maybe the pain is not so much, or you have to judge it. If you want to do your standing poses, 
I can show you a couple of ways that will help. All right. So taking the bolsters away, I'm getting a couple of blocks. So you can build this up depending on the props that you have, whatever you have there. OK, so first this will be Utita Trikonasana. So when you go into Utita Trikonasana, and you have some pain in the knee, so you have some tension in the knee, the more you straighten the leg, the more you will have that tension. So here we're going to relieve that by bringing the foot up on the wall. I'm going to walk the back foot back. So I press through the ball of the foot, and then Stay grounded with the back foot, tailbone in, and then slowly, as I press into the foot, I start to lift the kneecap up, tighten the knee. All right, so you're not hyperextending. When you're going down on the floor, the foot is on the floor, you can have this tendency to drop your knee. So here, keep the calf lifting away from the floor. Again, draw the kneecap up, and you can Lengthen over, hand on the wall, and turn the chest. OK? When you want to go into Virabhadrasana 2, walk that foot in. And I'm going to turn the block this way now. If you have a rounded block, the rounded block works really nicely. But I know most of you probably don't. So I'm going to just bring the foot up. Yeah, I'm going to turn these blocks a bit. OK, so now I have the block higher. So when I bend the knee, I can come into that bent knee position with the leg a little bit higher, which will create less strain on the knee. And then you can be in this position, Virabhadrasana 2. So better to come into the full bent knee position than let your knee hang. OK, so just. Work with it and see, see if that height works for you. So usually you're looking over the front hand. So I'll look toward the wall and then come up. All right, we'll just do both on the other side. I'm going to take my blocks back. Uchita Trikonasana. So here I had, you can even take more height if you want. So I'll take the ball of the foot to the wall, take that foot out. So the heel is lined up with the back arch. Back thigh is moving back. This front leg is externally rotating, which it's getting that external rotation because the foot is fixed at the wall. Bring the buttock forward. And then <coughs> pressing into the wall, I'm going to lengthen over so the hand is going to the wall. You can also take the hand down. OK, so coming from Uchita Trikonasana, you can also have the block there and build that height up if you need it. So first, taking the arm over to the wall, establishing that, that comfort in the knee, the lifting of the kneecap. And then as you come down, not leaning on the knee or thigh, but press into the heel and into the ball of the front of the foot. And then turn and bring your arm up. So notice when you start to press that knee toward the floor. Keep that lift from the, from the calf so you're resisting. All right, so now. OK, changing the position of the block for Virabhadrasana 2. I have enough space there. I'm going to walk this foot back and then bring this foot up. OK, and then bend the knee. So I'm just making sure that I can bend the knee, have this leg back far enough. Coming into Virabhadrasana 2, buttock moving forward, thigh moving back. This knee is moving so that it is facing 
the second and third toe. So lining the body up so that the bones are all stacked up over one another, the muscles are working in a balanced and even way. And then come up, and then walk in. Okay, so you can take your blocks away. We're now going to come into Virasana. <laughs> okay, so now I have two bolsters, and I'm going to kneel on these bolsters, and I'm going to have an extra bolster in case I can't sit back. So first of all, coming onto the knees, shin bones, and here you can see my toes are hanging off. So if you have any kind of ankle injury, this is also really nice for being able to sit in Virasana. And then, depending on your condition, you can take a bolster, and here that will give you a little bit of space. So making that space, lifting up the back of the thigh, and then sitting on the bolster. Okay, so you have cushioning for the knees, your feet are hanging off, so there's ankle, the ankle is not um, getting overstretched, all right, which is what happens a lot in ankle injury, it swells up in the ankle and you're, you're unable to sit back in Virasana, okay? So sitting in Virasana, now if you don't need to sit on the bolster, you can remove the bolster, if it's more just your ankle that you're having a problem with. Take your fingers right at the top of the calf, right in that knee crease, and extend that calf down and out to the side. So you make more space in the knee and then sit back on your heels. So that's if you have no problem sitting between the legs, you can do that. So you have to see which variation is going to be better for you. Okay, and then I will show you with blankets as well. So you might not have cushions or pillows. These, these cushions are quite hard if you have blankets. You can have the blankets down. I'll take three blankets so I have enough height. Okay. And then the toes are coming off. I'm sitting on the heels. So depending on how that feels for you, you can then again take that bolster and sit. Okay, so a combination of either the blankets or the bolsters. And then coming out. All right, now something else which is nice to do is to have more space in the back of the knees. Depending on how you're feeling, you can still have that blanket. Bring your knees onto the blanket and your shins. And then I want to take this in the back of that crease so that I create more space. So I'm going to come forward and bring that rolled mat, it's rolled tightly, right to the back so that it's above the calf, as much above the calf as it can go, and then come back here. So here I'm starting to spread and open the knee a little bit more and making space in the back of the knee. Now if that's too uncomfortable, you can have a block depending on how much more you need to come lifted. If that is already enough for you feeling that length and that circulation coming through the knee, then you can stay there. Or you can have a bolster. Or if you've been doing this for a while, you can just release your hips down. You can have your hands on your heels. Keep that lift of the chest. And just allow the the weight of your hips to descend with gravity. So what this also does is it brings some softness to the calf. So the calf can get very tight, and if it's very muscular, then <clears throat> it's hard to sit back. 
So this will help to kind of give that direction so that you're moving the calf down, moving the front of the shin bone down, releasing the, the skin, the muscle, all coming down. Okay, because the final virasana is sitting on the ground between the two ankles. So this helps to bring some openness to the knees. All right, and then take that away. Take your blanket away. And then you can just sit back with both feet together. Sit back onto your, onto your heels, for those of you that can. Now, I'm gonna show you another way to do this, which is to have a blanket for the knee. So I think I'll take two blankets for the knees. And I'm going to sit on a block. So here, now my knees are lifted higher. than my ankles, all right? So I'm getting a nice stretch through the front of the ankles. Depending on how that feels for you, you can also build it up a little bit higher. So here the, the thighs are still in line with your hips, but the knees are higher, so there's more stretch on the front of the ankle. So if you want to bring more circulation to the front of the ankle, then this is a nice one to do. So sitting in this way may alleviate your pain, may lessen the thigh pain or the knee pain. So I've just shown you many variations that you can do so that you can still practice these different um, seated poses and standing poses, but at the same time bring more space and circulation. Okay, now, if you're able to sit a little bit lower, then of course you can come into Virasana sitting on a block. Now the block can be low, it can be the next height, it can be the next height. So I'll take the medium height, and with that, I'll just come forward first, bring my head onto the floor, take that, the thumbs in that space, so find the crease first, and then pull the calf down and out to the side. So now you have more space in the knee, kind of like what was happening with the roll, all right? But you're doing that on your own. So sitting on the block, and you have your ankles and your heels and your feet on the outside of your hips. Now if I wanted to take that a little bit lower. So as you progress with any kind of knee pain, if it gets better, over time after you've been working on it, then you can start to lower the height. But there's all kinds of variations you can do so that while you're in that healing process, you can still um, do your practice, okay? All right, so now coming out of that, after Virasana, you come into Dandasana and here, already because we've been sitting with bent knees, you can feel the backs of your knees are a little tight. And so, especially for those that you, of you that are hyperextending, let's just take the blanket behind the knees so you have that support and straighten the legs. And then you can take the strap on the feet. And again, work, look and see that your knees are in the center. Remember where we had the block, inner knee rolling down, kneecap lifting up. So you're not pressing and jamming the knee into the socket. Stay right on the center of the heels, spread the toes and lift up through the chest. And then you can come forward that Urdhva Mukha action. So coming forward, just maintain that lift so you're not pressing the knee down, but you do have that blanket there. So you can feel the support underneath, hinging from the hips, keep that upper chest lifted, and then move forward any amount. 
So this is nice because it opens the backs of your knees. Your calves are not pressing down toward the floor. Paschimottanasana. And then straighten the arms. Still be aware of the feet. Be on the center of the heel. Knees are facing up toward the ceiling. Fronts of the thighs are also facing up toward the ceiling. So the, you have the front of the thigh, the inner thigh, the outer thigh, the back of the thigh, and the knees. The knees, there are four chips, four bones in the knees. So as we lift that up, we can start to see the outline of the knee. So start to get familiar with your knee. And now we're going to bend the knees. Take this blanket out. Come into a seated position. So again, we will use this strap, this, this rope, and I'll bring it behind the knee like I did earlier. And I think I'll take this bolster, since I'm seated on the bolster, and oftentimes when you're having that knee pain, you want to have that extra support. So I'll bring the leg out to the side, like so, and I'll keep this leg straight. So this is Janya Shashasana. So depending on how the knee feels, whether you bring the bolster in or move it out a little bit. So here, the same thing. You can bring that inner rope and stretch that inner knee. And you'll feel nice relief from that. And then you can come forward any amount. Your fingertips on the floor. Keeping that pull. So this is from the inner knee to the uh, uh, to the center of the knee. And then that other position was from the inner knee to come up toward the thigh. All right, so pulling that direction, you'll come forward. You can brace yourself with the other fingertips on the floor. And then move forward. If this is a hyperextended leg, then you can take some support under that knee as well. So depending on what you need, because it's closer to the floor, you can vary the, the amount behind it. Okay, so just <coughs> observing your knees, getting very familiar with the position of your knees, what, what's happening. So it may be that you've injured your knees because you've taken a fall. Or you may have, um, have soreness and pain in your knees because of the alignment of your legs, which I've pointed out earlier, some ways we can work with that. So regardless, um, if it wasn't from a fall or a bang, falling off your bicycle, falling on the pavement, and it's just from common everyday living, then these are things you need to be aware of all the time. So what's happening with your knees, what's happening with your thighs, your ankles, your feet, and how to make some space. All right, so just feeling that space in the back of the knee, both knees, and then we'll do the other side. So release that. Stretch out both legs. You can take the bolster to the other side. If you didn't need a bolster, and maybe you just wanted a little bit of height for that knee, then you can take a blanket. If you need the blanket underneath this knee, if you're hyperextending, taking that. So first, just be even on your sitting bones. Take the foot out to the side. Have that rope or strap behind the knee. And then take the leg over. Okay, so you're on the outer edge of the foot and you're holding close to the knee and you're pulling toward the knee now. So you, I've got my heel of the hand pressed onto the knee just for a little bit of leverage and pulling forward and then hinging forward. Let's be with your breath. You, as you're looking down, you see your knee just making sure it's in the right position. And then just with soft eyes, breathe, looking down. 
coming up. And we'll take the other direction. So from the inner knee to the thigh, pulling. So you see that space being made there. Coming forward. If it's too much to come forward, then just stay in an upright position. The more you come forward, the more weight you put on that knee. So depending on your condition, you can stay in this upright position. And then release. OK. So again, remember, I said you could use the strap for that as well. You didn't need to use the rope. So any kind of strap will do whatever you have at the house. OK, so we're getting ready for Shavasana now. So I'm going to have a little bit of support under the knees. It's good to have a partner. If you don't, then you have to put the sandbags, and then you have to come down and just make sure you're on your lower back. So I'm going to come down first. And my hips moving down. All right, and then I'll straighten the legs and have the Blankets right under the knees. Okay, good. So there, there's complete support of the knees. So it's resting. And then she's going to put that support right on the, on the knee. So it's on the inner and outer knee. Not going to fall off. So it helps to have um, a yoga partner that may be around to do a few things for you that will help. Thank you. OK, so now, because I have the blankets supported under the knees, I can have that weight on the knees without hyperextending my legs, All right, which feels really good on the knees. It helps to start to relax the knee, the front of the knee, the inner knee, and the backs of the knees. I don't have to worry about feeling pain or overextending, feeling some uncomfortable stretch. So with that support, you can just let go now. Relax your arms, relax your shoulders. Alternatively, depending if you don't have any weight, you can also bring your calves up on a chair with your hips on the floor. So that way, the knees are completely relaxed. So if you're in this position, just allow that softness to come, releasing the knees, the calves, the thighs. Just lie quietly in Shavasana. So when you come up out of this pose, you'll need to just first bring your hands in, and then you can start to roll your legs to the left, take the weight off, and then roll onto your right side, and press yourself up. OK? Thank you for joining me. I hope you've learned something. I've given you some ideas of what you can use as far as props in different poses so that you can alleviate the pain or at least practice and not have that kind of pain that you were having, which will enable your body to heal faster because it would be better circulation. So in case you want to look at some other videos that cover similar kinds of topics, you can look there. And until then, until the next time we see each other, Thank you for joining me, and namaste.